Hello everyone, today we continue learning Python and today I will show you how to process an image on the socket server and send it back to the client. So let's start. But before we start that video, I recommend you subscribing to my Telegram channel. You will find lots of materials, modules, libraries, examples and tasks on Python in my Telegram channel. Also, I put all the announcements there. So if you want to understand what will happen to the channel in the near future, you can go here. And I respond to comments much faster than I do it on YouTube. So subscribe to my Telegram channel, link in the description down below. In the previous video, we created that simple script. Well, actually, I don't think that that script is the exact copy of what we did in the previous lesson, but it does the same thing. thing. So we import socket, then we create our client, we use socket socket or let me start from server. We import socket, we create our server socket, so TCP IP socket. Then we bind it to the localhost 12345. So again, localhost, it's my own computer and nobody on the internet or any other computer can see that address. It's only on my own computer, okay? Then we listen, so we um, that server.listen function says that we can accept clients. Okay, then we have buffer size. So buffer size just shows you how much data we will send in one packet, okay? Then we accept one client. And what we're doing right here, we send an image from the client to the server. And when the server accepts a client, we open a new image and uh, we receive some data from the client. So client sends the image. And while we have some data, we write it to the file. And because of that, because the image can be very big, very large, we cannot send the whole image at once. Because of that, we are using that technique. So we receive some data one packet for all nine six bytes then we write the data so write that packet and we receive another one and until we have not received every packet we use that so we just write our data and that's it okay now let's go to client.py and let's see what's happening here again we import socket we create our client but now we don't bind our server but we connect to the server because that's a client and clients connect again buffer size is 4096 uh, by the way, if you change it to, for example, 2048, um, because it should be in power of 2. It's just uh, it's just how things should be in read and in send and receive functions and socket, sockets. If you change it like that, but you uh, leave 4096 on the server, so if you have different numbers on the server and client, it will be bad for a program. So 4096. It, it will be better if you create file settings.py and you will put one variable inside of here, inside of that file. And then both client and server will have that same setting. Okay, so don't change these numbers. Well, actually you can change them, but if you change it on the client, make sure to change it on the server. Okay, then what are we doing right here? We open a file, client file.jpg. That's the file on our local computer. We read it, so we read binary data because it's an image. Then we again read it. We just open it in right here and we read it right here. And again, while we have some data, we send that data. But if we don't have that data, so if our image is drained, we don't have anything to send, then we just close our connection. And let's test it. So now as you can see, I have server file and let's delete server file because I just tested it before the video. So I have client file.jpg right here. And if I run my program, Let's run it uh, server and client. As you can see, process finished and now have server file the JPEG again. And these are the same images. So if you mm, would host or if you would put two computers with that program, with that server and client, what you can do is send your image from one computer to another or actually any file because read binary can send docs file, actually any file. Okay. And that's how it works. But now what I want to do. I want to process an image on the server and send it back to the client. We'll apply Gaussian Blur for now because it's the simplest what we can do. And to process images in Python, we can install PO module. So PO module not only allows you to process images, but to work with images, to create images, to resize them and so on. So as you can see, my PO is already installed and let's import it. Import, but not PO, but PO, like that. And we don't need like the whole module because the module itself is a normal. So let's import from PU, import image. Okay. 
and that image will help us to work with our client or with our image sorry so now instead of with open server file the jpeg write binary as file what we can do well actually we can create a new mm, a new stream so let's do it let's import another module called io i'll explain why we need to do it or sorry not ios but io so input output in python we have streams so stream it's the data that you get in packets so for example when we use receive we get only buffer size amount of data so if i'll put one we'll get one byte if i'll put 20 we'll get 20 bytes what is um the good side of that um, of streams and so on the good side or the most efficient side of that of the techniques so of streams in general in programming is that you don't get the whole data in your system you don't need to get a lot of memory to work with a little bit of data so in our case what are we doing right here my python program does not store the whole image at any point of time we open server.jpg of course we write it but then we close it but we only have the data we need at that exact point of time because we have packets right here because we receive from packets and actually almost everything today works with streams so for example when you work with um, with sockets you use streams receive and send so receive in socket and send in um, sockets are streams when you work with actually with almost anything you use streams because that's more efficient than storing the whole amount of data um, if you for example use uh, these expressions, I forgot how to how they are called for range 10. You use kind of a streams because you don't store the whole list at any point of time. Of course, until you put a equals. But that is the similar technique. Um, list comprehensions, I think. Yes, that is the similar technique to the input output streams. So again, we don't get the whole data. We only receive it in packets, in small amounts of data. We can use I.O. not only to work with images sockets and so on but we can use io to work with image in pillow okay and by the way when you work with files you also use mm, streams because that's file stream and when we use vb we use binary stream and let's create another one so stream or let's call it file stream like that file stream equals io dot bytes io so bytes.io is basically what we receive when we use open file. But uh, there is um, when we create bytes.io like that, we don't save the file because open file needs to save the file if you use write binary. So if we use write mode, we need to save the file. I think you know that. But when we just create bytes.io, we don't need to save the file because it's not actually the file. Open returns creates a file if we use write mode and returns it. But bytes.io just uses bytes, bytes uh, input output stream. And that's it. So what I think you don't understand it right now, but let me show you. What can we do? Um, with openness file, let's remove that because we have already created file stream. So again, it's the same stream that we will receive when we will open a file using open function. But we'll just not save it. And that's it. And let's let's remove all of that and instead of file I, what i need to do is just write file stream because streams use the same api so if we want to write to the stream we use write if we want to read from the stream we use read and actually yeah that's how it works so now what we do we create file stream which is bytes io so we receive bytes we have um, string io we have i think text io yes text io but bytes io is um, I use bytes.io very often. Okay, so we receive some data, and while we have that data, we will write it to our file stream. Then we receive another packet, and another, and another, and another. And when we don't have that data, what we can do is use image, image dot open from file stream. Um, and let's call it image. So what is that? Image dot open. It's the function that is provided by PO. And by the way, image is not an object, it's a module. So yeah, as you can see, 
open is just a, a similar function so open when you use image.open we just really call the function it's not like an object image but we receive an object uh, so when you use that you do not import an object image you import some module image of the PO module but we have also image class in our PO image module I think you understand me so what we're doing right here we open our image using file stream so we basically say create an image using that binary data that's it now what we can do we can apply some processing to it let's import from view import image uh, image filter like that it's another module just an image filter there are also filters but i'll um apply the most um, the easiest one it's image filter dot gaussian blur Okay, and what we can do in here, we can use rod radius. So radius, for example, 10. So we'll, we'll see that the, uh, the filter is applied. And to apply a filter, what we can do is use, um, actually, I forgot how, how the function is called, image.filter, yes, image.filter. So what are we doing right here? We apply the filter, so using image.filter, and we um, provide Gaussian blur inside of here. If you don't understand Gaussian blur, it's when your image is blurry. That's it. And uh, another thing about PO module or PO module is that image objects are immutable. What does that mean? That means that when you create an image, you cannot change it. Well, actually, you can change it, but a lot of, um, and they are mutable, I think, but a lot of functions and people return an object back to you. So for example, if I use image.filter, what I need to do is update my image, um, my image variable because image.filter returns a new object. Okay, I think that's it. Well, actually images are mutable in PO, I think I forgot, but almost every function returns a new instance of an image. And because of that, what you can do is use image equals image filter and so on. Okay. Now, what we need to do, let's save our image for now so we will see what is the result. So server file dot, we can actually save it to PNG and um, provide format as PNG right here, like that. But um, since we are using JPEG as, uh, since our client uses JPEG and they don't want to include PO to the client side, I'll just use raw bytes and raw open close files of Python, of Python programming language, of Python built-in library. Um, I will use it as JPEG. I will save my um, image as JPEG. So let's run our server and let's run our client. Now, as you can see, process is finished and we have almost, yeah, everything is all right. So we saved our server file to JPEG. Let's go right here. And as you can see, our image is actually blurry. So as you can see, server file is saved and everything is all right. What we should do now? Now we should open it again. Why do you ask? Well, actually, because um, we need to send that file back to the client. We applied some processing. You can apply any processing inside of um, between while receive data and uh, image save. It's up to you. But I just show you the most easiest one. Just apply the filter. Now we need to send the image back to the client. And how to do that? Well, what we need to do is again with open. Let's call server file.jpg as read binary as file and uh, again what we need to do is actually copy the client so let's go to the client.py and let's copy that let's paste it right here and instead of client i'll use client socket like that so i just copied the data and um, that's it we read um the information from our server file to JPEG, we, and why we have that information, why we have some packets, we send these packets to our client, and then we read another packet. That's it. But there is a problem with that code. Well, first of all, our client will not receive anything because after we send the image, we close our connection. And what we can do again is copy our received data from here. Let's copy that and let's use with open uh, client file let's call it edited dot jpeg as write binary as file oh as file and let's receive some data so rec 
data equals uh, client dot receive from buffer size. Let's copy that. Let's paste it right here. And instead of file stream, I will use file dot write. So we basically do the same: receive data, while well, receive data, file write, and the receive data client dot receive. And by the way. Um, I forgot if I mentioned that, but that is the second part. Yeah, yeah, I mentioned it. That is the second part. And if you don't understand the code that is happening right here, you can go to down in the description and you'll see like the first part when I just send the image from the client to the server. Okay, but now we applied some processing and everything should work right right now. We get the image, we apply, we open it, we save it, we apply some processing and we send it back to the client. By the way, we can use image.bytes, image two bytes, two bytes. There is a function in PO two bytes, yes, two bytes, two bytes like that. And uh, it will translate our image to bytes and we can actually, we can omit uh, image saving on our server. But why I am doing um, image.save right here? Because all the images, all the extensions of the images like PNG, JPEG, um, I don't know, <laughs> JPEG, PNG, I forgot other extensions, but every image has metadata. And the problem is our image PO module does not know what metadata to include. So we don't include that metadata at all. We only get the raw bytes. And the problem is when we will receive our image on the client side, we will save it as JPEG, but we do not apply any metadata. That means that our JPEG, um, JPEG um, photo, JPEG image will not be, um, will be invalid because we don't have metadata. We don't know how to open it, how to read it and so on. And because of that, what we can do is we can actually use image to bytes and send the bytes from the server to the client. But we need to apply PO module right here. And like we need to actually get all the bytes and then save our image on the client side. But it's much easier if you will say if you will save um, your file on the server side, then you open it again. So when we open a file in server.jpg because we saved it and everything was saved correctly, we have all the metadata we need because P only includes metadata when we use image save. And because of that, when we use with open, we already have that metadata in the first and the second and the third packets of our image. Because of that, we can easily save it right here. But if I run my server and client right now, what will happen? Well, nothing will happen. When I will close my programs, I will see client file edited, edited but it, it will be invalid. So as you can see, image not loaded. Why? Well, actually, because we don't have anything in our image. What does it mean? That means that we do not receive our image at all. Why, you may ask, because we will never go on the 25th line, because we will always wait for some data right here. Why, you may ask, because the server now does not know where or when our image is, is full, when we receive the whole image on the server. Again, why? Because before that, before we used that with open, with client receive, we ended our program. So we had like that. We ended our program and that meant that our server.py should um, remove the connection with the client. Because of that, client receive uh, function, which is a working one, client receive always waits for some information. And until we get that information, we cannot move any further. Image, uh, because of that, client receive waits forever because we, what we do, we do not close the connection right now because we again wait for some data in the client. And that is why we need to create another marker. So marker, it's um, actually just any marker. And what I can do is use client.send and send, uh, for example, bytes, because we use bytes. Clients and servers cannot talk in images, data structure, they only use bytes. Um, let's put percent percent side and let's put, uh, by the way, they can talk in uh, in JSON, for example, in XML, in any data structure, but that, that data structure in the deepest layer is decoded to bytes. And uh, we use sockets, it's um, the most low level API for the Python communication. And because of that, what we can 
for Python internet communication. And because of that, what we can, what we should do is use bytes. Okay, and in Python, when we work, want to use bytes, you can use b in right here, or you can use dot encode function, and you can provide an encoding, for example, UTF-8. But for now, I mean that because it will be much more difficult for us. And what we can do is put 2% science and put uh, image completed, for example. And actually, there is no like real markers. That is only my message. And um, what you can do is put, for example, full. And that also will be a marker because it's just a marker for your specific program, okay? And image completed says, that in my program, it says that image is fully loaded. Okay, and what we can do is if receive data equals equals to bytes of image completed, because we, again, receive bytes, we can break. So what are we doing right here? Where we receive some data, we write to the file. And when we receive image completed, which we send after we completed uh, sending our image, we break our while loop. And after that, we cr we open our image, we filter it, and so on. Okay, and by the way, we are using the same here. So what we need to do is use if uh, if receive data equals equals to image completed, be image completed, let's break. Uh, because when we use, when we apply some processing with that, as you can see with open server file the JPEG write binary is file, we write some data, and then after we completed writing our data, what we do, we go to the while true, which is right here, and we accept another client. But the problem is, when we accept a new client, we don't need to break the connection with the previous one. And because of that, our client will be wait forever right here. And uh, yeah, that's kind of how it works. And because of that, we need to also put image completed marker at the end of the client. Let's copy that. And let's go right here again you can put any um any message to your marker because it's just a marker for your specific program there is no like a rule but i think that image completed is um, is great because it shows like image completed or file completed it's better to say and percent science uh, percent science allows allow you to really understand that nobody will send that message like if you're going if you're using a messenger if you build a messenger where you can either put a text so send a text to your friend or send an image or a file image completed is very rarely used and because of that you will not it will not be interrupted by um, client's text but again it's just for our program so image completed fits our needs again what are we doing right now we open an image and when we don't have any data yet our client sends image completed and we receive the data and we break our while loop we do it we do the same right here so we apply some processing we send our image back and after we send that image the whole image we use image completed and we do it the same right here now let's run it and we do the same right here so we break our while loop and we we exit the open and we close our program let's run our server and let's run our client client let's run it everything's all right and as you can see we have client file client edited and Client file edited or edited is basically the same version of server file. So what we did today. So as you can see, client file is like not blurry at all. Server file is blurry and client file, which was created on our client.py is also blurry. So what we did today. Today we created a program or we created a system where we have clients who can send images to our server. Our server applies some processing in our case, it's just go send the, and we send that image back to the client. And we save it right here. By the way, if you don't want to save every image on the server, because it will be, um, your server will get messy, your file system or on your server will get messy. What you can do is use um, import, import OS. And after that, you can use os.unlink. Unlink just removes your, um, removes your file. So it just deletes it. And server file the JPEG, as you can see, it's right here. But if I run my server and my client again, as you can see, server file was deleted because when we sent the whole image, like we saved, we saved it at first in here, we opened it again, we used some processing and so on. After that, we sent image completed and we delete that file because we don't further need it. 
And as you can see, client file edited is still on this on the client because as you can see, we open it right here in our client.py. That's actually it. So that is the whole video and that is the whole program that I wanted to show you today. Thank you for the watching and good luck.